Oh, so I'll make a motion to open. I don't know if you have yet already. Make a motion to open the select board meeting for um, select board board of health meeting for March 7, 2022 at 530. This is um, a complete Zoom meeting. So um, the usual Zoom meeting apply information. You can go to our town website um, and click on the link to join us here uh, on the calendar. So I'll call the meeting to order. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. So any public comment? We have no public tonight. Any public? We do have a public. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a public. You are a public. <laughs> And I would ask if it's possible if anybody else joins that you put public comment after the meeting so we don't spend a lot of time. I don't see anybody on, but just in case. Actually, since yeah. there's no one on, we can just. Yeah, we're done. Uh, okay, yeah, we're good. Done. All right. We'll open public comment. There was no public comment. We're right. moving on, right? Moving on. Exactly. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, and then so the so the discussion items tonight are really priorities for the town projects. I mean, that's what we're here for tonight is to, to work on um, and, and trying to identify some funding sources and the rest of the stuff on the agenda are kind of just placeholders, right? Unless you want to talk about any of that later, Casey, depending if we have time. Oh, no, placeholders. Okay, sounds good. So um, thank you, Casey, for putting together a list of uh, projects. Um, Don't thank me. Thank Denise. Denise did it. Oh, well, thank I you, did, Denise. I did. You're welcome. I did awesome. it, but then Casey and I worked on it, the funding part, and yeah, we prioritized. So thank you, Casey. That's great. That is great. I'm We're team, Trevor. Team. Go team. Yes, exactly. Go thank team. You. So this is all. Uh, I got you want me to screen share what your projects list, what our yeah, what you that know document what? was? That would be very helpful. Yeah, yeah that'd be helpful. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'll just run down them quickly. We have the sewer, the former grammar school slash senior center, the Leary lot, senior housing, Tilton library, town common, crosswalks, North Main sidewalk, North Main park, healthy soils, water management, and consult, uh, climate resiliency. So those are the, I guess, the, the projects we have in front of us versus a million other things right that, <laughs> that the town needs to do but these are kind of the ones that we'd have kind of zeroed out we've been talking about a little bit we have to kind of come up with you know what uh, in priority what we're going to tackle this year and then um what, what we think we're going to use for funding for for these uh do you want to speak a bit carolyn or do you want me to talk about any of that well i the only thing that i wanted to add is that um you know because of the meeting with joe and um wow. natalie uh they want us they think we should resubmit our letter of intent or you know we should actually take our letter of intent mm -hmm. even though andrew smith from when mm -hmm. we met with him said the there would be no possibility for the effluent pipe i think right. we should put it in because yeah. it was pretty clear that the MVP program was getting more money uh, from the legislature and that they were going to uh, include infrastructure projects rather than just nature based projects. So I would um, definitely support putting in our, you know, following up on our letter of intent for the 2 million on the effluent pipe. I had forwarded it to Denise because I really didn't know how to take the attachment off of the email and put it yeah. in but um and then the mvp greening of uh the leary lot so but a andrew had said that that would probably score pretty high so i you know we should be going forward with that anyway well, and so what i want to uh my question is is like so we get this grant right for two million uh what's our what's our match how much do we have to pay and like and then where is that pot of money coming from i i don't know because right. that was that was extra right yeah so i'm trying to figure out but i think you know if we got 75 percent or what i don't know how they typically what's the usual breakdown for mvp it depends there is no it there is, is no there's, formula there's no there's not it depends on the got project it. got it okay all right and so I, and if we do a, if we do so the, this is where we get caught in that catch 22, whereas we, we say, hey, we want to do this project. We'd love the money. And then they say, well, well, we'll award you this grant. And then all of a sudden we decide we can't do it. And then they, they look 
like, you know, we have egg on our face because we realize like, well, at that rate, we can't afford it or we don't have the money for it. I, I don't know what to do in that case. What do you think? How, how do we deal with that? I would say one thing about MVP grants now that I've experienced them for a little bit is they want you to have an identified match source after you sign the contract. So they need you to have that money after anything you've done before that doesn't count. So it's what counts after the contract gets signed. So you don't really know what you need. Right. If you're putting in for a $2 million project and say you estimate that maybe they're going to give you 20 to 40 percent that's a lot of money to have to come up with right even though we have a borrowing in place we they may not count any of that towards a match right well i i would say if we got this award then the then we'd look to our capital stability you know uh stabilization account or our stabilization account in general because this you know if if we got Two million dollar. I mean, out of the two million dollar project, we got one point six million. We'd be foolish not to do it. Right. However, but we could make if that they decision only gave later. us, if they only gave us two, two hundred thousand, right. I would just blow it off because right. we can, you know, we we could band aid it for another few years. Right. We have to find a, a different way to fund it because it just. Yeah. Yeah, my worry is like, because there's so many things on here that we need to do, like, which one is going to take that, that spot. Right. And, um, you know, I think we, we have to, I think we just have to see how much they're going to give us. Right. And just know, I guess, before we even get anywhere, we may say like, okay, thanks. No, thanks at this point. Right. I, okay. I mean, we can put in for it, but as long as we don't agree to it, then. Right. Um, we just want to make sure that that doesn't make us look bad in their eyes. I don't think we can do any worse now right. that there's so many towns in it. Truthfully. Yeah. Okay, so Carolyn and Trevor. So, I mean, did, didn't Joe and Natalie want a prioritized list? So we'll go right. over this and yes. make, okay, decide. So how right. far and is then, that up on the pri priority? Exactly. List? Well, that's what we'll figure out at the end of the day. I just okay. want to try and right. kind of figure okay. out. Yeah, I, would, I would put it, I would put it at lower end right because you know it that it it would be wonderful to have the effluent pipe fixed yes it will I cause know, us I problems what that is, Carolyn. it's, it, it's oh, the pipe cool. that comes out and goes into the connecticut river it's, when, the, it's the final pipe from us from the south deerfield wastewater treat, treatment plant so after everything gets clarified it's deteriorated so can i ask casey are you are you writing are you typing this in or should i do this He's on mute. Cool. You're on mute, Casey. <laughs> we'll, we, just, we're, we're good with the background talk. You can stay off mute. <laughs> what? No, no you're no always like, here. I'm talking to myself. It's, so you put, no your one mute, here. It's okay. you put your mute on just in case. Yeah, until I get the text here. from John, you're muttering. Um, <laughs> so what I did, Denise, was I put the effluent pipe, it's in this healthy soils water management thing. I put okay. the effluent pipe in for two plus or minus two million, okay. but I didn't change where it fits in this list right now. You guys are going to have right. to tell me where we change it. Yeah, I wouldn't change it. And the reason why I wouldn't change it is because it's really, it is in bad shape, but it's not in so bad shape that it's going to cost us a permit issue. Okay. All it's going to do is we can go down there and fuss around with it and, and, and we can get it by a few more years. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry right. about it. Okay. And, and then I would put in the Leary lot um, underneath the Leary lot. I would just say that, you know, we're going to do the ARPA funding slash MVP because we want the green um, we want the green part to be paid by, so we're not using up our ARPA funding. And then under the park, um, I, you know, Denise and I, we've got to sit down and talk to John, but I think that we can get more green infrastructure out of the um, 319 money for the Bloody Brook for the park. And so we need to look at the timeline of the park with the with 319 money 
and the Long Island Sound money, which is two different federal, you know, it's pots of money. And um, so we can figure out how we can pay for some more green infrastructure at the park and the Leary lot. So, so Carolyn, is this, this is federal money? So is that is, so the, uh, Joe and Natalie have nothing to do with federal money. Well, only well 319, 319 is federal money coming in for water quality projects. Is it a pass through through the state? Yeah, it's a pass through. Oh, okay. okay. And the 319 in a normal year, we can't, we can't even spend it anyway. And we're having Ooh. a hard time. So I, I feel very strongly, there's so much more money coming in under the 319, mm -hmm. like 50 million bucks that we have an absolute, uh, whether we partner with the Franklin Conservation District or the Mass Association of Conservation Districts or whoever, FERCOG, we can get a ton of money, 319 money for the Bloody Brook. And I would say that would be two ongoing projects because there's two things here. We wanna pay for storage and infiltration because 319 money is water quality money. So you, you have to have storage. How we're gonna keep the Bloody Brook from flooding is you provide storage and infiltration. So that's infrastructure money that is big bucks. And Ooh. then what we're gonna do is you, we're all the way through town, through the town projects. This will be the second tranche of money would be to put in green infrastructure that will again store and infiltrate um, mm -hmm. water. And that's why we got the park. You know, we got the Leary lot, both ends of our campus. Yeah, but the Bloody Brook is a different project, Carolyn. I think we have to look at that as a separate project because it's a whole separate focus. Oh, yes. But so that means we need to add it. Yeah, but oh, yes, yeah, we're, we're going to add it in here under the climate resiliency, but it will offset some of the costs of the park. It'll I don't clear. think you can do that with the engineering design right now. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I don't, uh, what my we have is as much green infrastructure we, as they think we can get in there. And where are we going to store all that water that we're? Well, the whole idea is slow the water down, right, John? Right. Yeah. But there's yes. not that much water that drops on that field, right? I mean, other than any other field, it's not like it's a. It's well, not I'm, I'm thinking of I'm thinking the along the edges of the park. If we, you can put in, you can you can put more stuff in around the park. Yeah. That would be structures, that would cost more money, but would be right. paid for by three nineteen potentially. Well. But can you leverage it? Is the question. A lot of these grants you can't play against each other. In a word, we'd be spending money like just we got money, but now we got to pay 25% of that to do. But we already there. we already budgeted the money for the park in the. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. But, so uh, I think well, also, does this change the timeline? Forward. That's a well, big no, question. I, that's why I got to sit down and we got to look at it. I don't. Well, but if I we're going to change the scope of how we're going to do this, it changes how we approach other things related to the park, Carolyn. And we need yeah. to keep that in mind because that could demonstratively change the timeline. Right, yeah. John? Yeah. No, I know. That's why I got to I got to say we got to sit down and look. Yeah, at but it. right now we're trying to give them priorities so they can help us chase know, money that's now. Why is, that's why I'm not putting this mm -hmm. the 319. We don't need help with. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to so do the 319 I, grant if we get it. Well, how, how do we even apply for we're it? We're not doing it right now, though, right? So is the FERCOG or the Franklin Conservation District or the Mass Association of Conservation Districts would be our would be applying for us. We wouldn't be doing it. Okay. But as far as priorities at this moment, right? It goes on the end. It, yeah. Keeping it at the end is fine. Yeah. If we don't need help and we don't need their help because the money is going to be hard to spend on the, the state. State has a hard time spending that money. Yeah. The money coming through the 319 is ours mm -hmm. if we have a decent project. Okay. And so I've, Denise. Well, but you I'm still have to apply for it, don't you? Yes. But we would not, <laughs> Apple, we would have someone applying for us. I mean, in other words, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Okay. It would be administered by either the FERCOG, Kimberly would apply for it, or mm -hmm. Megan, our 
um, or um, administrative person would do it, or Michael Left from the math, the executive director of MACD would do it. So, okay, so if we're not putting this down here, what do we need from Joe and Natalie pertaining to the park? Do we need anything from them? Yes. The only, the only thing we wanted them to ask was maybe if they can have a, a, a question to through our federal partners, you know, when are we going to see that money released for the grant? Yes. We That's need really the only question that, that okay. they would need to. So maybe we can put a, put a note under there, just a yeah. question. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But that's really their only, you know, the only request we have from them yeah. about the park. Now, what we have here on the, on the schedule of things is correct. Because sewer, we have to do the sewer and we're involved in the sewer. Yeah. And, and they need to be helping us figure out how we're going to get some more infrastructure money. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that, that's. And that 19 million is 16 at Old Deerfield and three for. Um, South Deerfield to finish phase two and two A alternates and the 60 million at the other plant. However, we hope to reduce that by a ton with our partners. Yeah. But oh, wait, we'll six see. sixteen in South Deerfield and three in Old Deerfield? Yes. No, sixteen in, in Old Deerfield and three in South Deerfield. Okay. That's what I was. Yeah, I may have said that backwards. No, I you did. You said it right, and my brain didn't process it right. Yeah. That's kind, and and we hope to chisel that sixteen down. You know, that's a that's kind of a it's a little more than back of the envelope budget for what we wanted to do. Um, but we'll we're going to still study that um, and figure out do we really need to do that, and then that's pre any help from nonprofits. I think we have to add, Trevor, I think we have to add 4 million. I would put in 4 million for piping and repair in Old Deerfield as well. Um, do you want that on a separate, uh, a separate? We don't have to do that right away. So I, I'm just thinking like immediate. Uh, so I guess we're looking at a couple different things. This list is like to go ask Joe and Natalie, hey, can you help with any of right this now. stuff? And right. then the other part in my mind is what are we doing for town meeting, which is like in a month. So what are we going to ask for for warrant articles? And um, that's I guess that maybe is a separate meeting, but I, I, I'm trying to get some sort of nailed down on what we want to do for annual town meeting and what we're going to use for you know, what are we going to do for capital? I don't know. Is that a separate meeting? That is totally a separate conversation, particularly since Franklin County Tech came in 67% over last year. 67. Oh my, my How God. How many kids went there? Um, apparently we send a lot, we were sending, we are sending a lot of kids. Just in this one year? That's a huge increase. It's a huge increase. That's gonna basically decimate our ability to, to fund capital. Oh my God. We're going, we're going to be cutting budgets. I can tell you right now. Why, why so much? What was their answer? Like it's, three it's, or 4%. Well, like, it could be a combination of things. I haven't seen it. I just know that Brenda told me it's it's up 67%. Oh my God. If we didn't, we didn't get whacked by FRS. We got whacked by FCTS. Yeah, but I mean, you can't typically do 67% in one year. Can you? Oh, sure. Well, they can. If yeah. the students, if the student body supports it, like the number of kids, there's a lot of people not going that's college track. Why our frontier rate is so low. Everybody <laughs> went to tech. Well, seriously, they're not. If they're going to tech, they're going vocational track, not college track. And that's a good thing. I, I'm not. I agree. It's I just you have to pay for it. Yeah. What do we normally pay for the tech school? It's usually like like a hundred and something thousand. Not counting capital, I don't remember. Yeah, capital was just about done, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Got, We've got a focus here. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. But that's so, what I mean. So it's not just one. we need to come up with the priorities and then we have to figure out. I had a long conversation with Mark Brennan about capital because we're well, trying we to get a to meeting get that together going pretty quick because we got to get this on. the We schedule. are. So, sewer number is for me. I, so, okay, so, so that's the thing. You guys need to Sewer's decide what the me. priority in sewer is. Yeah, sewer yeah. is. And then it's the second one, priority is got to be the grammar school yeah. uh, senior center. And the reason why this is important, the second, it's our number one really priority besides the sewer, 
is because we need an earmark. And this, we need is town a, this is a, a request. Yep. This is a request that they need to put into the infrastructure bill. If, if John is absolutely correct that we need, if, if the Senate putting together a bill, if the House is putting together a bill, we need to be on those lists. And we got to make sure, and this is going to happen in the next 60 days, okay? Because it's supposed to have happened after the state budget, from what my understanding mm -hmm. is. Is that correct, John? Okay. For the ARPA money, you mean? Because they're only yes. going to get us. This is a $9.4 billion ARPA right. money coming into the state. Okay. Now, politically, it's mo you know most of it's going to go to the eastern part of the state, okay? Mm -hmm. but they have to give a certain percentage to the western part of the state. Springfield, Pittsfield, Chicopee, there and Worcester. I mean, uh, and um, Holyoke are going to get money, okay? But they have to have some for peanut little towns, okay? So we need to make sure that we're in line as a small little town request, mm -hmm. and the three town senior center is our request. But it's, but it's also so. Let me just get that straight though, because we've got. Former grammar school is actually going to be town hall, right. and then we're going to and then we're going to add another building for senior center, which will be partly town hall and partly senior center. Correct. And that's what we need the earmark for um, a multi use addition. Right. Okay. And then. Um, so we're we're applying we for the community the one stop for the four hundred thousand to start the design work. Yeah. We probably will be applying for the million dollar under Joe and, and Natalie's bill for municipal buildings. You can get up to a million dollars. So we're gonna be applying for the million dollars. That hasn't happened yet though, but yeah. Their bill hasn't gone. So I don't know what's, all right, I'll ask Corinne about it. Okay. And then so, and then, um, we're going to be using our second half of our ARPA money, and we're going to be using CPC money. Um, so the whole combination Perfect. of that town hall should be coming together without too much. You're thinking uh, we're going to spend our whole second half on, of our ARPA on that? We can't, Carolyn. You've got too many projects that you want to use for ARPA right now. Well, that's we a can't. third meeting. Like physically, you don't have the money. That's a third meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's the third. I was going through the capitalist. That's why I know these things. What's the yeah, second but... amount of ARPA funds coming? It, we, it's supposed we don't to know. come by June, but uh, by the end of June. But it, our last one came in August, so it could so, be August. Um, it so was, the uh, state funds came in June last year, John. We're supposed to get them within twelve months. Okay. It was the lag that happened between June and August with the supposed county funds. Some counties are grabbing a hold of that 10% of that for administration. So we got to be very vocal that that's not happening here. Yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, I know we have to have a meeting on it, but I still would put down ARPA funding for the grammar school. And then we are asking, then we are asking for earmark mm -hmm. for the senior center addition. Yeah. And, and I would put in only get five hundred thousand dollars in an earmark. No, no, this is the earmark for the nine point four billion. She's oh, talking okay. about she's talking about an earmark in the regular budget cycle, okay. which is not a problem. Okay. But um, I don't anticipate we would be able to get any money out of a regular budget cycle. Right. But the ARPA nine point four billion dollars is coming into the state. They have to politically give some out here. So there's no reason we can't be having a good project. A three three town community, you know, senior center is huge, especially it was featured in Suzanne Bump's report. Yeah, right. And and our seniors are homeless. So yeah. let's, you know, let's make the story. Yeah. So we have to be That's clear in our wording. Nine point four billion dollars has been sitting there for six to nine months. Right. Yes. The legislature has not acted on it. When Trevor ran into our federal representative and inquired yep. about possible sewer funding, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor. Yep. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but Jim McGovern's words back to you were, "We just gave the state seventeen billion dollars." He said seventeen. Right. Yeah, he said seventeen originally. 
Yeah. I don't know where that, how he got 17, but at least it's 9.4 that we know of. Well, no, there's still 9.4 left. They've already allocated right. billions and billions and billions. Yeah. Which we right. never saw. Yep. Which we never saw. Right. Okay. And that's my point. And that's why the squeaky wheel. We are competing for with ourselves on that. So it sounds like we would be competing with ourselves. And Denise and I both have some strong feelings about what it means to compete for your compete with yourself on a on projects because it doesn't work well. Um okay, so we've got uh sewer, our our Grant, capital, the, our, our municipal building project, and then we've got to look at the Leary lot, which we had planned on doing for economic development. And then we, we talked about um, the common, and then you have the library hanging out there and then senior housing hanging out there. But senior housing, I understand is really more small potatoes because a lot of that's gonna be paid for by- That will be paid uh, for, that will be paid for by uh, okay. private, um, you know, whether so, it's RDI or it will, be, it will be other funding. It will not be town funding. So I think for for us, we really have to deal with either the Leary lot, which is really going to take some design work and coordination between, you know, several entities there. And we're going to need some muscle and some somebody that works full time on that, because that's a lot of work to get all that done. And um, so that I'm not sure where, where that all is. We have, you know, we do have money that we can use for that. Um, but I, I just got to get a bigger, a bit, a better schedule laid out on that one whole project itself. Um, well, the design that we have has to be updated with the um, uh, access to Elm Street. Yeah, and we don't quite have that yet until we can all sit down together and have that discussion on, you know, what we can give them for a right of way to their property and um, and then talk with Gary as well. So we really need a meeting together with Gary. So that's again, a fourth meeting that we got to get a meeting together with all the players involved and our yep. attorneys to kind of get that nailed down. Um, so you really, I mean, really on this list right now, we have, we have crosswalks or sidewalks and we have the, the common and the Leary lot. The library, I think, is what it is. I mean, I don't know what, you know, that's going to be just a vote from the people, I, you know, and then people have to understand, do we have the funds to do a project like that um, as much as they've been working on it that long? It's, do they, do we have the borrowing capacity? Right. I mean, once you do 19 million for the sewer and, and what we need to talk, we need a meeting with DOR to find out. So if we do both of these sewer projects, there's our forty million dollar cap, right? Do right. We have, does that mean that nothing can happen in the town for forty years while we're paying off those notes? I mean, that doesn't seem quite, especially when seventy five percent of that is not. I mean, it's town, but it's not the town itself. It's you know, you know, it's sewer user fees that pay for that. So it's kind of almost a uh, it's a it's a revenue stream that we don't have to fund each year. Typically, it's a little different than you know, something else, but I don't know how DOR thinks about that. So, um, and if we can chisel that down, then we could lift some of that um, capacity up for another project. But how do you tackle the, you know, eight to $10 million project on top of what we're doing there? And then how do we borrow, you know, we can borrow for the the engineering work for the if we don't get an earmark, I don't know what we do for a senior, for a town hall senior center. For my thought, will... two priorities here. You have sewer and you have the new senior center community center. Those yep. are the two massive priorities. If we can't tackle sewer with federal injected funds that they injected $17 billion into the Commonwealth, if we can't get part of this paid for, we are forever, no matter how you look at it, yep. handicapped. Yep. We can throw every other project out unless it's minuscule in nature because yep. our borrowing capacity is at max. Right. So I think number one is obviously sewer. Number two is obviously a community center. And then everything else is, is kind of just piecemeal. Senior right. housing is going to work itself out with community preservation funds. Yep. Lily, yep. Denise, the whole group is on top of that. Carolyn, that's utterly amazing. The park is working itself out. We just need a room right. on the 15th. And then yep. we need to work through peer review on the planning board. But we are progressing forward quite well. We can look at 319 funds, but 
ultimately, when we talk to Joe, Natalie, and we get Jim McGovern in the room, I'd love to see the three of them in the room together. And I'd love to see Jim McGovern look and say, we injected $17 billion here. Where is it? Right. Yep. I, like, we love good. you all, but it's a very direct question. Where's the $17 billion? Right. If it went all out east, then they need to... They need to own the fact that they aren't supporting the western part of the state and there's no reason in heck we can't call business west denise and let them know we'll do a follow-up hey, um, what we wanted from joe and natalie for the tilton library was for them to talk to the mblc and to get a waiver to say that we could we could add things on use it for multi-use because that it that if that's possible, that could basic that could potentially change some of the other projects, or connect it, or just do smaller, you know, smaller projects. Or if we can't get that, then that's a good reason why we say the library is going to be a real tough sell. Yeah, we wanted to figure out if we could waive the eighty to ninety person meeting room in a library. Yeah, we we need we need the uh, some of the prescriptive um requirements to be changed a bit um we need we do need a wa waiver of sorts we were hoping to do a waiver yeah. to include the community center but i honestly think moving over to the town hall to the grammar school now renovate that and um add on a three town community center is very doable we just need I, to, I agree we just need to get moving on that um, if we get the community one stop grant for 400,000, that will put us in line to get an earmark, I think, because we can follow up on, you know, we can actually get architectural design done versus mm -hmm. just a conceptual yeah. idea. Well, let's talk about town meeting. Let's talk about the community center quick. We know that we put in for money for design, engineering, and architecture of a brand new town hall, in addition, an elevator. What we haven't identified funding for is the addition, right? The true addition, and we can't use that community preservation fund. Right. So we may want to look at um, stabilization reserves to put an extra few hundred thousand dollars aside on annual town meeting to have the same architect design both at the same time, project A and B. Hopefully, putting them out together but separate because we do have to separate the funds yeah we we do have to separate the uh cost for both of them although having the elevator be shared is a cost savings so Agreed. we somehow have to have that incorporated um yeah i just i know with the board's thoughts you want to progress this as fast as possible and if we're going to do that, we do need to identify funds to do that additional design scope on that new community senior center. Yep. So here's the thing. We don't even have enough money to put back into capital stabilization. So it, assuming that the budget plays out in a manner that it's starting to progressively look like. So if we use capital stabilization or stabilization, just stabilization, which you have a lot of money in. Yeah. That might be a better option. I know you'll get questions, but on the other hand, this is this is a capital asset management. Fundamentally, this is the question. What do you do with your capital assets? Do you make them work for you for another 40 years or not? Now, the two biggest driving factors in this town right now are sidewalks and a community center. Yep. There are going to be three or four people that ask questions. They're going to be positive and it is going to pass by a sailboat. Yeah. Which means we need to make a make those crosswalks and sidewalks a priority in terms of capital funding, John. The, you got to connect the, the dots. The sidewalks should be all set. We We're set 250,000 aside last year. Yep. We put 250 yeah. aside, but if it's going to cost us money to engineer them and build them, we need more money. I had already put an extra 200,000 in for this year. Take it out. Well, I'll let capital decide to do that. That's not I me. I think we're going to have, that's going to be paid for by chapter 90. There's a, there's extra money coming in chapter 90. And then we can apply okay. that towards the, the sidewalks, you know, the frontier sidewalks. 
Well, I think we have to have that's something that is yeah. part of a conversation with your department head. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. that's because any unilateral decision by the board to to approach it that way could undermine a plan that may have been going for 10 years. Well, I know that Oh, I I agree that we shouldn't undermine our uh, pavement management plan even though it's a based on um poor assumptions now, you know, for climate yeah. change. I agree. But if this is additional, I'm talking about additional chapter 90 funds, we have been very clear that sidewalks are a priority. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, we were going to apply for the small streets and the spaces for the sidewalks and the crosswalks, and they determined that for that particular grant, the sidewalk probably wasn't going to fly as easily as the crosswalks. That's why we separated the projects. Although you could submit two, you could only get one. So that's why we're pretty confident that we will probably get the crosswalks, fingers crossed. And then we thought that we still need to do the sidewalks because that's so important for the park, you mm -hmm. know, to continue getting, you know, having support from the townspeople for the park. So we thought we would do that under complete streets, but I don't know the parameters. Well, the thing about it is, is we've got to engineer it because of the water table and because of right. Bloody Brook. And the thing is, is raising that, you have to be careful about how you're slowing the water. Even if you, I don't know that a 319 grant is going to do us any good on that one, Carolyn. But if we do complete streets, are we hamstringing ourselves for complete streets later? Or do we just focus complete streets for this iteration on this sidewalk? The problem with this complete street cycle, it's out of, it's, it's too yeah. slow. Um, so, cause you have to do design work, then you do project implementation. So it's right. two years out. It's right. just better for us to bite the bullet and pay for it out of either chapter 90 money or ARPA money or whatever. So the sidewalk, Casey and I met with an engineering firm last week. She is supposed to get us a price this week to bring it up to 25% design. The next complete streets grant application is due May 1st, she's going to let us know if she can meet that deadline to be up to 25% design to submit that by May 1st. Is this so, the sidewalk from Frontier to the park? Yes. Yes. Okay. On the okay. west side of the road. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully this week, Casey and I will have more information on that. And hopefully it's positive information. Right. Hopefully we can get that complete streets application in May 1st and get that progressing along. Because right. it, ideally, if we could utilize if we are going to use chapter 90 and that's a possibility we could if we could get some money from complete streets to offset some of those costs it would it would go along it would go much longer uh, further i guess i should say so if we dig out the sidewalks right now i estimated old deerfield and south deerfield paving them at the current rate of about 160,000 we have 250,000 that we allocated last year at town meeting. Right. That's not touching concrete. That's not touching right. downtown. That's just repaving the sidewalks, but digging them out, regrading them. Right. So we are still looking okay. And we're fortunate our, our acting highway director has agreed to start digging those sidewalks out towards June or July, and we'll start progressing. And then yes. I think we should look at like what I would, so one of my just, main concerns is that when we do the sidewalks the entrances to the street where we start from a sidewalk you know we concrete those corners and we have that um a consistent look and design everywhere we do it so it's just like i mean obviously if it doesn't make any sense at all in one spot but i'm just saying like i just really want the town to have a consistent look when you go to Great Barrington or Lenox or um, Pittsfield or you know anywhere you go, it's just a constant theme of that it looks all the same and it you know just people recognize and we well, bring it up to speed and you know I know tar is easy um, and concrete's a lot more money but I think it just it looks better and is you know more attractive and more long term durable if we do those like small transitions and then we pave all the way down the long spot. Tre Trevor, we have to do concrete for the to be accessible. Right for ADA, accessible. okay. ADA accessibility because it doesn't. It does your your asphalt is doesn't is non compliant really. Okay, good. Yeah. So we would we would just do, those transition speed. Yes, pieces. there would be small sections. Right. Of, and and you can make 
the look the same. You know, I mean, it just doesn't have to be plain concrete. It needs to I mean, I, concrete. If, you, if you look at Hatfield, I mean, they concreted that all the way down through, man, that looks fantastic. I don't know how much money that cost or how they got it paid for, but man, does it look good. Call Diana and, and ask her. Why? <laughs> Yeah, you but know? a lot of those projects are complete streets. Yes. And we, and we had problems with our complete streets because of the state-owned highway. Right, right. And so we can still do complete streets on yeah. sections. Yeah. And, I'm and thinking like in front of Cheslick, you know, yeah. in front of Cheslick, from the Leary lot to, to the corner of Cheslick, up Elm Street, that all is us. Mm -hmm. and we, well, we my thought it. was from the, uh, the new town hall. Oh. Right. Yeah, exactly. That sounds so you good. might want to wait so we don't have to rip things up. But, you know, certainly. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so let's go back to we're agreeing that the grammar school town hall rehab and but this and this is number two. Yeah. And, but it's the senior center edition, three town senior center edition, which we are asking earmark is yeah. our number one priority after the sewer right right we're all on the same page on that. i agree with that yep okay okay so right. i think you guys have to decide how you want to progress with these other well they're just going to sort themselves out the senior housing is going forward okay yeah. we don't need we only need them to help us as we move forward with our like when we put out an rfp or whatever <laughs> but this is they don't really have to do anything at this point and and so except that, maybe support letters right yeah. support letters and you keep them in the loop they need to help us but it's not anything serious the leary lot is you know how we fund that through the mvp um and arpa it would be nice to have a, as a third priority to keep them in line you know keep them informed about going through the mvp program but I think that will score well because the MVP already paid for design. So obviously we're sending in an altered design, but the green infrastructure on it is a follow through. So I think the scoring is gonna be fine on that. But again, they can follow through and, and for us. Um, I think Denise and, and you working on the crosswalks and the, um, and the uh, sidewalks and stuff is, keep them in the loop because those are small all those little grants add up but i think if we can do one of those grants a year and possibly get it in the next five years people like trevor are going to look back and go damn this is where i wanted to be yeah yeah because yeah. time goes by fast i i don't even say it's a five-year project i think it's three year so, so right now what my, what i'm thinking is to start off with um, a very short narrative saying that we're really focusing on the sewer and the former grammar grammar school senior school but the rest of the projects you know i mean they're still important but that's what we're focusing on for them for the first thing and then i'm just wondering about other letters of support because i only have three asterisks for um cpc funding so what other letters of support would be would you one is there um i mean are there other grants for that town common that we can get i don't know i mean it'd be nice to ask ask them do they see anything in in um out there working with one stop is there any funding for for town well, commons well, trevor, no, trevor we no, had that no, MVP, no, i mean that um mma conference remember they were talking about uh creative space yeah uh, I have but my notes here. Somewhere. That was for like during the pandemic where you could go and have food out there and yeah, stuff. But but that was, that was, that was through 75,000. Yeah, that was not through one stop. For this thing. That I, was I, through one stop. So the thing about one stop is you don't want to compete with yourself. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. clearly came across yeah. last week when we had, right. a, Denise and I had a meeting. And I, I listened to the second webinar today. So yeah. we're all set. We're doing, you know, we can only do one thing. Yeah. Go for the under grammar school okay, is it? Um, so question, yeah. Obviously, the town common is my pet peeve, right? I mean, my pet project. I'm trying to get <laughs> this thing going because I feel like it's a catalyst to a lot of other yeah, improvements absolutely. that will happen in the town. And I don't, you know, I'm not sure where CPA will come down on that, whether they'll give a portion or some, or if we decide as a select board we want to use 
ARPA, you know, as, as attaching that to the, I, I feel like that and the Leary lot are kind of like one start of the, of, you know, beautifying our town and having a place where people really want to come and hang out and, um, you know, looks like we invest in our community. So I'm not sure how that'll work. It's, it's, it's important in my mind. Um, but I'm, you know, it's, it's up to everybody else in the town, what they want to, what they want to tackle. And complete streets won't allow that. No, they won't I have, there's nothing there. Yeah. That they'll do. I gotcha. Yeah. So they don't state owns the highway. Um, so if ask, we can uh, ask Joe to earmark yeah. $400,000 for that. Right. I mean, any of that stuff, I mean, if there's any, any help they can offer there, uh, would be great. And then, um, you know, that's what I thought. If we could get a, a portion from CPA, a portion from ARPA, you know, portion from an earmark, you know, something like that would be actually that would work. That would work under the budget earmark. Yes. Because it's less than 400, it's less yeah. than 1,000. So let's it. ask for a budget earmark. So a budget earmark. Yes. A budget earmark of 350. How much do you need? 350. Because 350 is, is the budget for, for the project. Oh, well, but that then, was a couple that was a you know a couple years ago and everything's different. So now. I would say 400. No, no, because you want it, you want us, to, it's a four hundred thousand dollar project. We're gonna put in a hundred thousand. Right. So ask for three. Ask for you three. Yeah. But that, when you're asking for a budget earmark, you gotta have skin in the game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's so that know. means we have to change the capital request, Trevor. Why? Why? No, we no. don't. Because if no, let me you so in the capital discussions, they want to know what separate funding sources we're using. So if this is a four hundred, we don't know yet. We we, we have no it, idea. And it's I know form, that, yeah. but if you're going to ask for an earmark, you need to have the right number in the budget in the capital schedule. So if three hundred fifty thousand is the right number, those numbers have to match. It's the Casey, right number. The budget is getting pretty solidified right now. Okay. The chances of us getting an earmark are low. Very but we're, we're gonna do it. Okay. So we'll but ask, we're not but... gonna change what we're asking for on the capital thing because it's not probably gonna get funded anyway because we have no money. So you just keep the earmark in here. We're not gonna fuss with capital. Okay. Now, so what, what's going to happen is the state's like three billion over what their projected revenues were for FY22. Right. They're going to come out with a supplemental budget in around May or June. We want to add this earmark into their supplemental. This earmark budget. is how we're going to we're going to squeeze it in. Yes. So okay, so um, Denise, are you clear that what we're asking for is a three hundred and fifty thousand earmark? for um, the town common because of the problems related to the state owning 116, okay? You know, Street. Street, the whole deal. We, we are not able to compete on the complete streets. Yeah. So we need, this is a problem. We, we, yeah. Here's the problem. We are not, we can't compete. Our we've infrastructure, we've our infrastructure is falling apart. The state is not doing anything about it. Struggle up is right. falling apart. We got, we got, you know, our town is looking in disarray. We need to get our, you know, a place for our senior citizens to sit and have a coffee and watch the birds in the fountain. Okay. Yep. Um, Trevor, I cannot believe it. You are getting trained. Hey, Trevor. <laughs> I have to have, have your story. story. Hello. Hey, so I, I did listen to, or I don't know, I listened to some webinar a while ago, <laughs> and it was, um, it was, there's grant funding under mass development grants and it's called Commonwealth Places. Yes, yes. Are that's the what we're talking about. Okay, so they, there's, they've got two things. They've got a seed grant, 2,500 to 15,000. 15, it's a one-to-one -one match. Then they have implementation grants, 5,000 to $50,000. That also is a one-to-one -one match. So, yeah, those, are the, those are the ones I was talking about, Denise. Okay, so I can look into that a little bit more, but do we have the match for the 50,000? Because that's what we it's in the it's in our capital budget right now. Okay, okay. So I think we what Carolyn's saying is we consider that a match. Okay, whatever gets funded. So let me look into that a little bit. Yes, 
But okay, but are you clear? What we were talking about is because of the yes problem yeah. with Route yeah. One Sixteen, the old Route One Sixteen. Yep. We are not able to get complete streets. We that's what you know, Halffield, Sunderland, right. Northfield. All these towns are having the their towns downtown fixed. Yes. yes, and we are been handicapped. Yeah. So right now is the perfect time to be asking for the small earmark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is a budget earmark. What we're asking for under the senior center is the ARPA money, the 9.4 billion mm -hmm. ARPA yeah. money earmark. Yep. And that's a separate earmark. So we're asking for two earmarks now. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the big ask. We need sewer help and we need community center help and we need town common help. Well, wait, are we putting Leary Lot third or Town Common third? If Leary I, I Lot Town Common is going to be the same project because yeah, is the same we're going to we're going to do whatever we do in the Leary Lot. It's going to dribble over to the Town Common a little bit. We're going to do crosswalks and handicap accessible whatever. Okay. But you presented them as separate projects, so they she are. needs to be They're aware separate. of how she They're frames separate. it. They're separate. Don't worry. Yeah, so, put them, so put them forth. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not doing a long narrative for each one because so, they want to see that. They want to see what the project is, what funding we have, what funding they want, what do we want them to do? Here's so what I'll say: the town common is designed and ready to roll, shovel ready. So the, so the town lot. common put the town common ahead of the Leary lot. Because we have, I mean, even though we have a, and, a slight plan, there's a lot of work still to do with the right. Leary lot. We, it'll be a while before we have. A project we can do there. Yep. Okay. Because we got to we got to go through the you know swapping land and all kinds. Yeah, of and getting some design stuff and yes. Yeah. So, okay, so I put the count and I put the town common third, Denise. Yep. Yep. And then, yep. all right. So, do you want to stack the rest of these things in a, any particular order? I think the order is fine because the park is going to go is going to keep going. Well, do you want to move the park up? Yeah, the park should be uh, before senior housing, I think, mm -hmm. because that's that's yeah. we're doing it already. We're doing it; it's happening, and we and we already funded it. So, John, how do you think the crosswalks and sidewalks play into that that? I think they're before, narrative. They're, they're with the park or just ahead of it because they're going well, to. Well, that's the thing. I think the crosswalks and the sidewalk need to be adjacent to the park. Yeah, they're they're well, in they, it. No, they, they should happen. be ahead of the park. They yeah, ahead of it. Or, yeah, they're all. Yeah, because it's all happening. They're actually going to be implemented before the park. John, does that make well, sense? No, I I agree. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure that everybody sort of understands. Um. And then I'm, and then I'm just gonna Please. say like, this Telton Library is important. It really is. I mean, we, it's a, um, it's a project they've worked on for five years. They, um, they've gotten, they've done everything right for this. Um, it serves a lot of people in town. It can, it can serve a lot more if we do better branding with it. I think and um, more expansion. And I think that. Um, it, it almost seems like it's two different silos of, of people in town. So, you know, if you use the library, it's extremely important. If you don't, it's not really important to you. But it but it really does, it, it can serve and and take a lot of the things that um, we do. It could take up a lot of bandwidth and, and help us, our community, a lot more, I think, than we... It, it could do a lot more than it's doing. I think it does a lot and it reaches the people that it reaches. I think it could reach more people. I just don't know how to fund it with the cap of the sewer sucking up all the money. Well, that's yeah. the thing. Your borrowing allowance is pretty much capped at this point with those two projects. And my fear is like, okay, as John said, like, does that mean for 40 years, we're not gonna do another thing? We're gonna need a new sewer plant in 40 years. Right. We're going to need a new school in 10 or 20. I mean, we're going to need to get waivers from DOR and DLS on your borrowing cap. I was going to um, say right? and I did discuss this and 
Yeah. You know, I had a meltdown. Right. <laughs> oh, right. You, I, you're right. It's just how you approach it. You have to make your argument for it. Right, John? Yeah, because I do it. But uh, it's, it's a yeah. fixed budget. You know, I mean, it's like a fixed revenue stream because you have sewer user fees. So it's not like it's, oh, we're just going out and building an ice rink, you know, and we have nobody to pay for it. No, you have a fixed. You, he's right. So, OK, I, but I just did not want to speak to that a bit because it, I think the, the library really is important. And I just and I think that we're, we're kidding ourselves if we think there's not going to be a ton of people that are going to come out specifically and vote for this. Oh, there are going to be a ton of people that come out and vote for this. We just have to educate. What is the sewer rate going forward? Can we afford this? Do what's the borrowing limit? You know, all those things need to be laid out. And um, I know here's the awkward part of the whole thing. The library was estimated at eight point eight million. So you're getting roughly four point four. They yep. committed to raising two million. So let's say it comes in at nine. Yep. They've committed it to the two million. The state's committed to four point four. Six point four millions committed funds, but yep. it doesn't come off of our borrowing capacity. Exactly. So exactly. That's the challenging part that I think we need to identify with DLS and right. DLR. Yes. Right. Yeah. But, but we also have to figure out how we're, you know, what 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 would be the waiver that we'd want? What's prescriptive? Yeah, that we can reduce the cost so that it isn't over the estimated eight million. Mm -hmm. You know, because if we get enough waivers that you can still do the project for eight million, you know, then it's worth really looking yeah. at again. Yeah. But you know, once the project hits 10, 12 million, you know, the Greenfield Library was seven hundred and fifty per square foot. So, yeah. And so what did they redesign? Really Carolyn, think yeah. about it this way. They had to have done something to make changes in that design for it to come in at the same amount no, it was estimated was out, before. That was that was out to bid pre-pandemic prices. It was already in the pipeline. Well, in the pipeline is one thing. Bidding is completely another. Well, it was already out there from what I understand, right, Denise? Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know how that happened. You know, well, I'm with John. I think we need to be cautious about this, and it is. It. it I do. I don't know how helpful DLS will be, John. They I tend do. to not be as responsive as they used to be. Well, we got to try. I mean, I think it's. We need a really good meeting with them to just really have a good discussion on our finances going forward and how we're going to tackle this stuff. They must have advice from what other people do. Other towns have to be in this. Well, they position. publish IGRs for that. <laughs> I, I think an IGR is, uh, so. information guidance. Yeah. Well, so everything I, I, that's I, I out there, need, they tell us how to do it. I just want to have a conversation. I don't need a, you know what I mean? Well, like, but is that a conversation for the entire board to have? Yeah. Because right. if that's a conversation for everybody, we have to invite DOR and they have to be willing to come out. They may yeah. just say to you, well, no, do. look that's at an IGR. No, they have, they've talked about, I mean, any of the seminars we go to, they're like, oh, we'll come and give you a hand. I mean, it's their job, you know? So I think from a, a strategic perspective, I would ask Brenda to research the possibility and what it would take to increase that and uh, ultimately that would be amazing because she is sharp as a tack. She's great at what she does and she should be able to get the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just afraid that if we have a 67% increase in like our, you know, the tech school budget, and, I mean, I don't know how we're gonna balance Tech that. school budget last year was $323,000 in operation. You're looking at a $213,000 increase of Casey's number at 67.5%. Doesn't correct. make any sense. No, it does not. There's got so, to have to be 50 kids going there from from Frontier to go for that amount of money. Sorry, I looked. Well, but that's the thing, yeah, Trevor. You could have 50 kids going there. And that's why our Frontier A 50 is kid great. increase? It doesn't make any sense. That's too many kids. Why don't you just find out? Isn't Bob frontier? on that? Who's on that board? Is it Bob? I don't know. That's the thing. She gets the budget. I don't see all of this. She no, needs to show it to me, but she plugged the number in. I think you just you know passed us out. Poor Denise is going Denise to get us focus, on the schedule. Focus, focus. It's, it's 30. I got to leave in 15 minutes. We're good. Yeah, she's got to leave in 15 right? minutes to get to town. Okay, so, so okay, on. are we okay with how this list is framed? Because yes. once I send it to Denise, she'll. I'm good. Are you going to flesh it out or do you want me to do more on this, Denise? 
Um, well, I'll see what you did, Casey. And then what I'm going to do is start off with a very brief narrative. I'm going to prioritize the project. And probably what I think I might do is to put the um, sort of clump, keep them separate, but clump the North Main with the crosswalks and the sidewalks and do a little narrative you know, for that as okay. well, seeing how they relate to each other. Yeah. So I'll just work on that, then I'll send it back to you guys. Okay. And then I also have stationery that's made with the okay. town. Oh, John. Okay. Massachusetts gives out grants every year for wastewater. I've sent it to Denise and myself mm -hmm. and Carolyn to look into tomorrow. Springfield okay. got five million dollars in a loan forgiveness. Whoa. Yeah, I know these are I talk to Dave about these all the time and they're really they're not set up for us, but um and that's what's the frustrating thing, but they're I agree. more income based, Trevor. Yeah. I gotcha. Yep. Yeah. And they and 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 the problem is is yeah, all that money from the state and the feds are going into these programs and we don't qualify for them. You know, that's why but USDA was the only one that really helped. And they're 20 year notes, so not a 40 year. So they're just the rates get to be so expensive. Um, you know what? We, I mean, we got to, uh, we have to just explain to them that we have looked into all these things. This, yeah. you know, all the stuff that they suggested, we were already doing. So um, right. what we have to, and that's where you keep going back to them and explaining over and over again, we already did this. We don't, we don't apply. Denise already knows the income. She already figured out we're not even, not even Sunderland is eligible, eligible for. Right. Um, well, not at 60% of the state median right. income. They're still about $2,500 over that. Right. So worse, you know, we, we don't have a chance. So that's where, that's where the earmarks, getting earmarks is, we have an opportunity yeah. here. And getting a budget earmark this year is a good opportunity because, as John said, the revenues are, are over budget. So there are going to be earmarks. And then getting earmark, and, and we have certainly don't fit in the complete streets. We, we've, we've tried, we've done all this stuff, for our stories there. And then, but the senior center is also a good story because, you know, we can take advantage of the elevator on the outside of the reno of the town town hall building but also it's three towns and it's and three towns and here's the thing denise here's yeah. the kicker that i think if jennifer remillard were here she would say they have seen an uptick in participation because they're in a more pleasant space yes they're over yeah. at the they're over at the church and it really is a more pleasant space for them to occupy and people are coming in people are coming back but they're also coming in Three, 30 and, new people thank you jennifer well and we're, and we're going to have more services we're going to have an, a nurse there you know th the whole time that the senior center is open for you know just blood pressure nutrition mix it's up on medication so wow. we're going to offer more services We've got to figure out how they structure their law to spend the money. That's where the baseline is going to come down to between the House and the Senate, how they file the bills, are there other earmarks in there? And that's where we've got to capitalize. So Denise, when I hear that they start to formulate those, I'm going to send you like the links and the anything I can on it. And that's when we've got to communicate with our legislative delegation to make sure we're getting an earmark. I mean, I don't understand the big deal. All we want is 50 million for sewer and we're pretty much good. <laughs> right, exactly. It's not that but much. But don't biggie. But listen, we'll pay but for listen. the senior center. Just give us but the 50 listen, million we're, for sewer. We're, we're, really, we're talking a 60 day window here. So um, we just have to pay a really a lot of attention and we have to have communication with their offices like every week, okay? Like, you know, what, what, well, this is what we heard you know, can you just check it out? Is Are we going to be able to be, a, oh, by the way, what do you think? You know, so I know this is irritating for everybody, but we've got to do this. And because um, it's it really is like a 60 day window. This is all going to be sorted out by June and July. Um, and when, are, when, are you, when, when are you setting up a meeting with McGovern and Natalie and Joe and who can do that? Um, I think we need to have this narrative done. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because the minute it's done, we email it out and say, we need a meeting. 
Okay. And, and because I, I think you know, Joe and Natalie can facilitate that for us and with us. Okay. It'll be done right, John. And I don't know. Uh, does any I I like Marky's office. I think we should be reaching out to Marky. Although, if somebody knows is working with Elizabeth Warren on something, we should ask Tim or um, or anybody if they if they have a better connection in Elizabeth Warren's office. But Marky yeah. seems to be pretty good. So we should be looping him in too. Don't him off, Carolyn. Well, I think we need to go certainly approach our our direct allies first. Oh yes, yes. Get but them I, get them on board I, or at least listening. I don't think you should be. We should be not just doing McGovern. McGovern is great. No, I we need to expand it out. But let's start with them and then see see what the reception is. Yeah. And, and you then, know. Carolyn, when we meet with McGovern, I think we should capitalize on the fact that we are moving forward, that we have a lot of projects, that we are all talking to each other, and we are forced to be reckoned with. <laughs> yes. No, that's what you do. You just, I mean, you've got to be wicked polite, but you just got to be in their face all the oh, time. Yeah. And, and it's between now and the summer. And I know, you know, June, July timeframe, everybody, all this money will be already carved out so we we've got to be like focused yeah but i think this was a really productive meeting because we figured out a budget earmark and we figured out the arpa earmark and that was really huge those are the two things that we really need and then they I can follow casey, up on the other jim mcgovern say that again i said i told casey who is close to jim mcgovern and you sent it in an email meeting yeah and Franklin uh, Tech is $25,454 a year per student. Ooh. Frontier is $17,800. Deerfield Elementary is $16,900. So it's 17 and 18 versus. A couple years old, probably. That is probably a couple years, you know, a year or so old, but gives you a rough idea. So well, four kids, schools, so it's 200 Well, and charter schools are money right off our cherry sheet too yep yeah it's very we expensive gotta, i mean oh, that's tough too clear it clear dot or clear gov dot com is a if you ever look it up it's a great great resource all right thank you trevor what yeah. is that clear dot gov? clear clear gov you oh, can okay. type in any town in the in the country or any school district in the country and get a good breakdown okay oh geez okay <laughs> it's so depressing. Everyone thinks I'm anti-kid. I'm not anti-kid. It's just that it's school school budget is, is squeezing us out of. I mean, we, it's just not sustainable. It's so hard to balance budgets. Just I just can't imagine a. There's so many variables that it's like an emotional roller coaster. Every budget. Yeah. yeah it is. Yes. <laughs> but a sixty-seven percent increase. Yeah, well, I'll crazy. talk to her tomorrow, but that's what yeah. she initially told me. Be curious oh to God. see what that is in dollar yeah. amount. And oh my God, that there is was so a there was a huge increase in the treasurer in Montague that does. I think they do the treasurer work for the school, and it was up like thousands. Bob Decker found it, and he yeah, because Bob's, <laughs> our, Bob's <laughs> our rep on that board. So, so oh, he, Bob. I'm, I'm leaving. You got to go. Thank you. Goodbye. So, so got that from you. Thanks, John. We'll talk tomorrow, Casey. So, yes. I'll okay. make a motion to adjourn our select board meeting. And I will second that. Thank you for all your hard work. Appreciate everybody. Yes, everybody. Yeah, I vote aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Yep. I'm here Thank for you, me. everybody. Thanks, that John. That was a really, really good meeting. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah.